Welcome back to Sprig River Homestead, and today we're talking meat rabbits. If you watched our last video, the kind of Q&A on raising meat rabbits, we did kind of tell you that we were going to be doing an entire series on meat rabbits. So this is the next video in the series. We're going to talk today about um, the breeds that make good meat rabbits and the breeds you want to probably avoid. Now, the first thing to know about meat rabbits, of course, is any rabbit will make meat. The point of picking certain breeds for meat rabbits is to maximize your yield. There are some breeds that are developed to put on the most muscling, the most loin, the most leg muscling in the shortest amount of time on the shortest amount of feed. For the homesteader, this means maximum meat for the lowest amount of feed input. So we're going to talk about the main three and kind of go from there as to... Um, what other breeds make good meat and what what ones eh, probably should be avoided so the first breed we're going to talk about is going to be your new zealand these guys are the standard as far as meat rabbits these are what you see raised commercially for meat rabbits um they've kind of gotten pretty popular in show circles you see these guys a lot at fairs these are real popular with the 4-h kids for meat pins they're going to come in white black Blue, red, and broken, which is any of those colors plus white. Um, the, the thing with the New Zealands is personality can be an issue. Because these guys have been raised commercially, they tend to be a little bit more high-strung, not as personable as some of your other breeds. But they are big rabbits, and they're known for putting on um, the, the most muscling with the least amount of feed. These guys are going to hit around 5 pounds at 8 to 10 weeks. So these are going to be your early butcher rabbits. Um, now in terms of litter size, you're talking in most of your lines 10 to 12 babies at a time. So they are very efficient mothers. Um, and they tend to be good mothers. They're, like I said, not terribly personable, but they are good moms. These are big rabbits. So if you're going to have the kids involved, these are maybe not the best breed for you know, to, to have smaller kids handling. You're going to have does that run 9 to 11 pounds in this breed. Bucks are a little bit smaller, but not a whole lot. So when you've got a rabbit that's maybe not as friendly, that's a lot of rabbit for a little kid to be handling. Okay, so the next rabbit we're going to talk about in the big three meat rabbits is the Californian. These guys come in one color and one color only. They're going to be white with the dark ears, nose, feet, and tail. Uh, their eyes are red, <laughs> which can be a little daunting. Not everybody likes the red-eyed rabbits. In terms of personality, they're very similar to your New Zealand's. They do tend to be a little bit on the high strung, although you do get good friendly lines, of course. Um, your does are going to be 10 and a half pounds at the max, at least to the breed standard. Of course, backyard breeders can get them a little bigger, a little smaller. Like your New Zealand's, these guys are going to be butcher ready in 8 to 10 weeks. So again... Maximum growth on minimal feed, which is what, as homesteaders, we're really shooting for here. Um, same thing for litter sizes. You're talking 10 to 12 babies at a time. Excellent mothering. And like the New Zealand's, which I did not mention, these guys can be breeding ready at five months, which is a little, little quick, considering they don't always reach their maximum size until as much as eight to nine months. So if you're looking for a big rabbit that's going to have a fast turnover, Cows in New Zealand are the way to go. Okay, not the best picture in the world, but the last of our three big meat breeds is the satin. These guys are known for satinized fur. They have a translucent hair shaft, which makes them shiny. So they're very pretty, and if you think you're going to save a rabbit um, as far as raising for pelts, these guys are a good choice. Now, they're going to be the same size as your Californians, so your does are going to max out at about 10 and a half pounds. Excellent mothers, you're still talking litter sizes of 10 plus oftentimes. But personality can be a big deal with these guys. In the show community, we also refer to these guys as Satans. So keep that in mind. If, you've, if you're if you looking for a good producer and a good pelt producer, and you don't mind a bad personality, these might be a good way to go. Okay, so as I mentioned, the big three are probably going to be too big. In terms of size if you've got kids that are going to be helping out with the rabbits but we do have some choices for you so in the top of my um, smaller breed 
would be your Florida white. These guys are basically a miniature version of the New Zealand. They come in white, white only, red eyes. They're, they're only going to max out at six and a half pounds or so. So you are going to hold these guys over a little bit longer in terms of getting to a good butcher size. The nice thing is that they have about the same dress out ratio as in New Zealand. So they do put on a lot of meat and they do have a good dress out percentage. These are going to cost you a little bit more to raise just because you do have to grow them a little bit longer. But your breeding stock, because they're smaller rabbits, are going to cost you a little bit less. So everything kind of balances out. But these make an excellent choice if you've got family members, you know, that are 10 and under. These guys are still very manageable. Next on our list, we've got the Trianta. These guys are also going to hit about six, six and a half pounds. They're a very dense little red rabbit. They are not as popular in some areas, so they might be a little bit difficult to find. They have fantastic personalities. They've got a red coat that is very, very, very similar to an Irish setter. So they've got that really deep red mahogany. Great personalities, good breeders. Another thing to note, even with the Florida white, all of these little guys are going to be breeding at five and six months. So you're not going to have to wait on a big rabbit to mature. These guys are going to be ready to go and start making you babies by the time they're six to six and a half months old. So next on our list is going to be the standard chinchilla. This is also going to be a rarer breed. Might be a little bit difficult to find, but this chinchilla color is very, very pretty. These are very nice rabbits, very family friendly. Um, they do only come in the one color. That's this, this kind of silvery agouti color. Uh, they're also going to be around the same thing. They're going to hit six and a half, seven pounds, somewhere in there. And you are going to have to grow them out a little bit longer. But the personality and ease of handling makes them, uh, you know, a worthwhile um, rabbit to raise. And lastly, in my big group of four is going to be the lilac. Now, these guys are a rare breed. And even where I live, where a lot of people raise the rare breeds, these guys are a little bit hard to come by. If you can find them, their personality is second to none. These guys are absolute sweethearts. A friend of mine that raises these is saying that she is actually hitting a five pound butcher weight, oh, excuse me, a 12 pound, a five pound butcher weight at 12 weeks. Now, this is probably an exception and not the rule, but these guys do have a pretty good growth rate and they do, especially if you've got one that's got a good confirmation, they do have a good uh, meat to bone ratio. Okay, so those are my picks for the three best meat rabbits, the four that are best for family friendly. Now, this does not mean that these are the only choices you have. You've got a lot of other stuff that if you've got them locally is worth a look. Palominos, Champagne d'Argent, Argent Brune, even the Cream d'Argent, which is a little bit smaller. These guys have all been developed for meat and do put out a nice carcass. You've also got your heritage breeds like uh, your Silver Fox, one of my personal favorites, the Americans. And then you've got some of the showier breeds that still put out a good size amount of meat, like the Harlequins, which is what we do. So you've got some options. Now, things that you want to avoid, anything that's got the word giant in it. So we get a lot of people looking for Flemish giants. This is not a good meat rabbit. Because of the large bone and the slower growth rate, you're not going to get the same dress out percentage. This includes the checker giant and the um, chinchilla giant or the giant chin, depending on how you want to say it. Another thing to avoid is crossbreeds. And I know everybody's going to groan and go, oh, but they're just meat rabbits. Here's why you want to avoid the crossbreed. Because they're a cross, there is no way to know what your, your bone percentage is going to be, what your growth rates are going to be. I'll give you a little insight into this. So we did crossbreeds when we got started in meat rabbits. And our very first pair of 10-pound rabbits, one was supposedly a New Zealand. The other one was a New Zealand Flemish mix. The second litter I got out of these guys, 7 out of 10 babies looked like Rex. A little surprising. Rex make a good-sized carcass. So I grew them out. Two of them we held back. Because it sure seemed like they took forever to get to a, a good butcher size. The two that I saved maxed out at 7 pounds. This was the end of our crossbreeding with these guys. 
I was looking for maximum meat on the smallest amount of feed and I wasn't getting it because I didn't know what to expect. Now, there is a difference between a meat mutt and a crossbred. A crossbred is going to be where you've taken any two breeds, known breeds, such as your cow and your New Zealand, and you've crossed those. You can get a pretty consistent idea of what you're going to be looking at. But when you, you pick up one of these things listed on Craigslist as a meat mutt, they could be anything. And because so many different rabbits have so many different growth rates, you want to avoid the meat mutt. A crossbreed, however, is fine, as long as, they, as you know what the cross is. So any of your rabbits, your champagnes, your palominos, any of that that you know is a good-sized rabbit that's going to give you a good yield, that's perfectly okay to get started with them crossing in to, say, a New Zealand, a Satin, a Californian, or even another one of those breeds like the Silver Fox. So tell me what you think. If you've got questions about raising meat rabbits, our next one in the series is going to be talking all about equipment. So if you've got questions about equipment, uh, what's the best equipment to start? Feel free to drop a comment in the, uh, the comments below and uh, we'll get back to you and we'll try and put that in the next video. That's it from Sprigger Homestead. Thank you.